us wanderers. The definition wanderer, what it, what it means is, it refers to, and first of all, I want everyone to be careful not to use this as a permission slip to feel entitled. If anything, if you feel this truly genuinely resonates and you've checked in with yourself and not come, not jump to some new agey uh, conclusion while you were burning incense and looking at your tarot cards, that this is where you come from and now it all makes sense and now I know why I suffer so much here. Um, without jumping to any conclusions, I want you to really check in with yourself. Just keep it grounded, keep it to yourself, be intimate with it, be genuine with it, be honest with it and truthful, okay? Any information like this should be dealt with in that way, in my opinion. Otherwise, you go a little off balance and you scare everybody else away from spirituality. So the idea of a wonder is one whose overarching core personality, soul consciousness, so to speak, the personality that you are beyond this personality, the higher personality, the higher soul, the, the core frequency of your overall being, which has multiple life extensions, multiple physical life extensions and non-physical life extensions, that that soul has been through plenty of physical experiences, third density, this, what we've just been out of is third density experience. So that now they're either usually fourth or sixth density oriented beings who are very much in alignment with being of service. And one of the most profound ways for them to train up their own vibrational evolution is to be of absolute service, which is to throw a portion of their consciousness into a physicalized civilization that's not native to their already collected group consciousness civilization with a rich history on a completely different planet and being now in many cases mostly non-physical especially if we're talking about sixth density wanderers so fourth or sixth density wanderers and i skipped the fifth because the fifth hardly ever happens because it's very self-focused it's very independent in its focus fifth density learning so it doesn't happen as often it happens sometimes but it doesn't happen as often. So the most beings that come here out of the desire and need to balance themselves on a certain level to come and teach here, they experience life usually a little differently. And especially in the last 40 years, there's been a massive wave of wanderers to help the collective ascension or, or change or transformation that's happening at this planet to help more people be able to vibrationally align with that and get along more smoothly into fourth density transformation. So the concept of wonder is, in general, free, can also be seen independent from planetary transformation, but it's usually very prevalent. Wanderers are more prevalent, they're more, um, they're more present, they come more, become more present on a planet when it's about to go into a transformational age that moves the whole planetary sphere from third into fourth density, for example, and if there's a lot of beings on that planet that are ready, but they sort of need that extra little push right at the end to guide them through. That's when usually massive waves of wanderers come to a particular planet, which mean, again, souls that are of a native frequency and have a native history other than, quote-unquote, Earth-native human being that have maybe done many of these cycles as an exploration of their soul and theme, and this is what they know. So we come from outside the box in that way and we give something from outside that box to help those inside the box migrate to expand their box, as planet Earth is expanding, which is like clockwork. It cannot be negotiated with. It's not dependent on the human beings on it. It just happens. The human beings have to get on board or get off board, quite literally, if you see Mother Earth as a ship, which it kind of is. So we're here to help get as many people as we can on board with this change. So the primary desire of most wanderers is twofold. One is to radiate love and light by the very nature of their core frequency being of a different frequency, often quote-unquote higher, not better, but higher, more evolved, more brightness is accumulated in their beingness and can come through more clearly. Therefore, by the very nature of them being here, they uplift the collective consciousness. Like I said, every single one of you has tens of millions of beings connected to a similar theme or wavelength. So every change that you make affects all these beings. Everything that you are in radiate, even if you are completely messed up here as a wanderer and you have no idea about spirituality whatsoever or who you are, and you've just become a product of society altogether, and there's no more distinguishable difference on a personality level between the wanderer and the non-wanderer, even at that level, their core frequency is still aiding and assisting in uplifting this collective. But you can see that from the wanderer's point of view, it's kind of a risky move to do this because 
part of third density is the veil of forgetting. And the veil of forgetting is what we all remember as not remembering who we are. So those that have a strong desire to be of service take that risk because they know the benefits are exponential and certain safety mechanisms are in place so that the chances are most probable that this wanderer being will be at least to some extent on track but at least not led completely off track. In a way, they are shielded, if you will, by the brightness of their evolution, by the brightness and the clarity and transparency of their overall being. It's very, it's very tangible, and some wanderers, many wanderers, wake up to that sense and they feel different. They feel like something is out of place here. They're not quite at home. And that can look like many things. It can look like, it can look like becoming a spiritual teacher and anything in between or above and beyond or below. How to penetrate the veil of forgetfulness how to remember more of who we are. Focus on the one. Because that is very native to your frequency. Especially if you're a sixth density wonder, what is key at that point is to honor the one. In essence, that might be the case for you. Focus on the one. Does that make sense? And as you remember the one, you bring the one, you bring your remembrance and your honoring of the one into every single one of your actions more and more. You bring it into your life. Your life becomes a testimony to the one. It becomes a celebration, an honoring of that. And it doesn't have to look very sober. It doesn't, but it will be very humble. It will be very pure. It will be very sincere. But sincerity can look like abundance. It can look like freedom. It can look like passion. It doesn't have to be a monk-like existence. I'm honoring the one. But you will, regardless, honor the one. Inside, you will always sort of feel like a monk, even though... Outside, you're exuberant, perhaps, and you're creating all over the place, and you're having fun, and you're living a personal life of enjoyment and fulfillment. There will always be that part of you which cannot be made any concessions on, that unwavering connection to your soul and from your soul to the one that will be with you all the time, and that will be incorruptible no matter what happens here, depending on your level of clarity on that. But once you reach a certain threshold, you become incorruptible. And that just feels and humbling and beautiful. And you feel proud of yourself, again, in the most humble of ways. Good job, buddy, against all odds. Pretty nice job, I must say. And it's just so humbling to be incorruptible. It's so humbling. And it's so empowering to not be fooled by the surface level of planet Earth and its activities and its people and its belief systems. Sure, you can be led off stray every once in a while, but you're still incorruptible. You'll always come back to center very quickly. You'll always learn very quickly. You'll always notice something is off. You'll never believe that something is off. Sorry, you never believe something is right when it's off. You will never be fooled in that way because that's your priority more than anything else. And there's no power like it. There's no humility like it. There's no service like it. There's nothing like it. This is true commitment. And it will empower every other aspect of your life, especially for the wanderer nature. <sighs> I don't mean to sound all that serious. But sometimes it's good energy to get you to the core of your sincerity, you know? It simplifies everything, too. You know who you are. You know your job. You know your honor and your duty. It's just the same thing. You know your love to be here. is still present, otherwise she wouldn't be here anymore. Take a deep breath and relax. And so you're committed to inspire wherever you go. Inspire love, inspire joy, inspire abundance, inspire infinity, inspire that we're all one in your own unique way, in your own unique template of expression, in your own unique excitements. And as you do, the planet will change very rapidly. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the ones that are here to shepherd this transition. And we are the ones completely endowed with every skill we need to successfully complete that journey as a collective as part of the collective, not as separate from it. Many wanderers also, when they get really powerful in their crystallization, sometimes build up negative views of their fellow men, which can also be a trap. And I've experienced that myself. So it's also important to have that balance for yourself where you're actually able to always coax her back into falling in love with the one she came here to support. Because if you start to resent the object of your love and service, you resent your own journey altogether and you deny the progress you've been making.